I am thrilled to share this message with you today. We all understand the feeling of being trapped in our comfort zones, where everything feels secure and familiar. But what if I told you that true magic happens when we step beyond those boundaries? In today's message, we'll discuss five ways to break free from your comfort zone and unlock unprecedented growth and success. I know firsthand how daunting it can be to take that leap into the unknown, but I've also experienced the incredible rewards it brings. You're not alone in this struggle. We all encounter moments of feeling stuck and comfortable. However, it's up to us to make the choice to break free and strive for something greater. If you're ready to turn things around and step out of your comfort zone, then you've come to the right place. By the end of this message, you'll have a clear understanding of how to overcome your fears and limitations, embracing new opportunities for personal growth and success. So let's dive in and prepare to step out of that comfort zone and into a life of fulfillment and achievement. Are you ready? Let's start with number five. It's an honor to be here today to share with you one of the most crucial lessons I've learned in life. This lesson has not only transformed my own life, but also the lives of countless others. It has the power to unlock your full potential and take you to heights you never thought possible. And that lesson is this. Embrace failure. Yes, you heard me right. Embrace failure. It may sound counterintuitive, but it's the key to stepping out of your comfort zone and achieving greatness. We live in a society that fears failure, where it's seen as a sign of weakness or incompetence. But what if I told you that failure is not something to be feared but embraced? What if I told you that failure is not the end, but the beginning of a journey toward success? Failure is not the opposite of success. It's a part of it. Through our failures, we learn, grow, and become better versions of ourselves. Every successful person has faced failure at some point in their lives. But they didn't let it define them. They used it as fuel to propel themselves toward success. So how do we embrace failure? How do we shift our mindset from seeing it as something to be avoided to something to be celebrated? The first step is to change our definition of failure. Instead of seeing it as a negative outcome, see it as a learning experience, an opportunity to grow and improve. The second step is to take responsibility for our failures. It's easy to blame others or external circumstances, but we're the ones in control of our actions and decisions. When we take responsibility, we take back our power and can use our failures as stepping stones toward success. The third step is to learn from our failures. Every failure has a lesson to teach us. It's up to us to reflect on what went wrong, what we can do differently next time, and how we can use this experience to become better. The fourth step is to keep trying. Failure is not a one-time event. It's a part of the journey toward success. We must have the resilience and determination to keep going despite our failures. As long as we keep trying, we're not failing. We're learning and growing. And finally, the fifth step is to celebrate our failures. Every failure brings us one step closer to success. Instead of beating ourselves up over our failures, let's celebrate them as a sign that we're taking action, pushing ourselves, and on the path toward greatness. I know it's not easy to embrace failure. It goes against everything we've been taught. But once you do, once you see it as a natural and necessary part of the journey toward success, your life will never be the same. You'll have the courage to take risks, to step out of your comfort zone, and to pursue your dreams. You'll learn from your failures and use them as fuel to propel you toward your goals. You'll become more resilient, more determined, and more confident. And most importantly, you'll live a life without regrets. Moving on to number four, as human beings, we're creatures of habit. We find comfort in routine and familiarity, sticking to what we know because it makes us feel safe and secure. But when was the last time you did something that scared you? When was the last time you took a leap of faith and stepped outside of your comfort zone? I can guarantee you that the most successful and fulfilled people in this world have one thing in common. They're not afraid to step out of their comfort zone. They understand that growth and progress lie outside of their comfort zone. And one of the best ways to break out of your comfort zone is by meeting new people. Now I know that for some of you, the thought of meeting new people may seem daunting. You may be thinking, but I'm an introvert. I'm not good at making small talk or meeting new people. Well, let me tell you this. I used to be an introvert too. But I realized that if I wanted to achieve my goals and dreams, I had to step out of my comfort zone and connect with new people. Meeting new people opens up a whole new world of opportunities. 
It allows you to learn from different perspectives, gain new insights, and expand your network. And let me tell you, your network is your net worth. The people you surround yourself with have a significant impact on your personal and professional growth. So why limit yourself to the same group of people when there's a whole world of potential connections out there? I understand that stepping out of your comfort zone can be uncomfortable and even scary at times, but growth and comfort cannot coexist. If you want to grow and reach your full potential, you must be willing to get uncomfortable, and meeting new people is an excellent way to do just that. So how can you start meeting new people and stepping out of your comfort zone? The first step is to have an open mind. Be willing to put yourself out there and be open to new experiences and connections. Remember, you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. The next step is to be proactive. Don't wait for opportunities to come to you. Go out and create them. Attend networking events, join clubs or organizations that align with your interests, or simply strike up a conversation with someone new. You never know where these connections may lead you. And when you do meet new people, don't be afraid to ask questions and listen. People love to talk about themselves, and by showing genuine interest in them, you can build a strong connection. And who knows, you may learn something new, or find a common interest that can lead to a valuable relationship. But let me warn you, stepping out of your comfort zone and meeting new people does not mean changing who you are or trying to fit in. Be authentic and true to yourself. People are drawn to genuine and confident individuals. So don't be afraid to be yourself. I also want to address the fear of rejection. I know that for some of you, the thought of being rejected by someone you want to connect with can be terrifying. But rejection is a part of life. It's how we learn and grow. And the truth is, the more you put yourself out there, the more likely you are to face rejection. But remember, rejection is not a reflection of your worth or value as a person. It's simply a part of the process. So don't let the fear of rejection hold you back from meeting new people and stepping out of your comfort zone. Now, I want to share a personal story with you. When I first started my career, I was working as a salesman. And let me tell you, I was not a natural at it. But I knew that if I wanted to succeed, I had to step out of my comfort zone and connect with potential clients. So I would go to networking events and strike up conversations with strangers. And you know what? It was uncomfortable and scary at first. But I kept pushing myself, and you know what happened? I started making connections, and my sales began to increase. By stepping out of my comfort zone and meeting new people, I was able to achieve success in my career. So my challenge to you today is to step out of your comfort zone and meet new people. Whether it's at a networking event, a social gathering, or even online, make an effort to connect with someone new. You never know how that connection may impact your life. Moving on to number three, my friends, I want to share with you one of the most powerful ways to step out of your comfort zone and expand your horizons, traveling to new places. I understand some of you might be thinking, but Jim, traveling can be expensive and time consuming. How can it possibly help me in my personal development journey? Well, my friends, let me assure you that the benefits of traveling far outweigh any costs or inconveniences. First and foremost, Traveling allows you to break free from your routine and step outside of your comfort zone. We all have our daily routines that we're comfortable with, but it's in those moments of discomfort that we truly grow and learn. When you travel to a new place, everything is unfamiliar and unknown. You're forced to adapt and navigate through new environments, cultures, and languages. This challenges your mind and expands your perspective, making you more adaptable and open-minded. Think of it this way. When you're at home, you're in your comfort zone. But when you travel, you're thrown into a new environment where you have to figure things out on your own. This pushes you to think outside the box and be resourceful. And as we all know, personal growth happens outside of our comfort zone. Moreover, traveling allows you to gain new experiences and create unforgettable memories. These experiences can range from trying new foods, learning about different cultures, or even facing your fears by trying out new activities. These experiences not only add richness to your life, but also contribute to your personal growth. For example, if you have a fear of heights, traveling to a place with stunning landscapes and breathtaking views can challenge you to face that fear. And once you conquer it, you'll come back home with a newfound confidence and a sense of accomplishment. Additionally, traveling exposes you to different perspectives and ways of life. It's easy to get caught up in our own little bubble and think that our way of life is the only way. But when we travel, we're exposed to different cultures, beliefs, and customs. 
This allows us to see the world through a different lens and understand that there's not just one right way to live. This exposure to different perspectives also helps us become more empathetic and understanding towards others. Furthermore, traveling allows you to step out of your comfort zone in a physical sense as well. It pushes you to try new things and be more adventurous. And this adventurous spirit can carry over into other aspects of your life. You may find yourself trying new hobbies, taking on new challenges, or even pursuing new career opportunities that you never thought possible before. But perhaps the most significant benefit of traveling is the self-discovery that comes with it. When you're away from your familiar surroundings and daily responsibilities, you have the time and space to reflect on yourself and your life. You may discover new passions, interests, or even a new sense of purpose. Traveling also allows you to disconnect from the distractions of everyday life and be present in the moment. It forces you to slow down, appreciate the beauty around you, and be grateful for what you have. And this gratitude and mindfulness can greatly contribute to your personal growth and overall well-being. Now, I know that not everyone has the means to travel to far-off destinations. But let me tell you, traveling doesn't have to mean going to exotic locations or spending a lot of money. It can be as simple as taking a road trip to a nearby town, exploring a new neighborhood in your city, or even trying out a new restaurant. The key is to step out of your comfort zone and expose yourself to new experiences and perspectives. Moving on to number two, I want to talk to you about one powerful way to step out of your comfort zone. Taking on new challenges. We all have our comfort zones, those familiar and safe spaces where we feel at ease and in control. It's human nature to seek comfort and security, and there's nothing wrong with that. However, if we want to grow and achieve our dreams, we must be willing to step out of our comfort zones and embrace new challenges. Why is it so important to take on new challenges? Because it's in the face of challenges that we discover our true capabilities and potential. Every great achievement in human history was the result of someone stepping out of their comfort zone and taking on a new challenge. From inventors to athletes, leaders to entrepreneurs, they all had to overcome their fears and doubts and push themselves beyond their limits. But here's the thing. Stepping out of our comfort zones is not easy. It requires courage, determination, and a willingness to fail. Yes, failure is a possibility when we take on new challenges, but it's also an opportunity for growth and learning. As the saying goes, a smooth sea never made a skilled sailor. So if we want to become the best versions of ourselves, we must be willing to face challenges head on and embrace the discomfort that comes with it. Now you may be wondering, how can we step out of our comfort zones and take on new challenges? Well, the first step is to identify what your comfort zone is. What are the things that you're comfortable with? What are the things that you're afraid to do? Once you've identified your comfort zone, it's time to think about what challenges you can take on to push yourself out of it. The key here is to start small. You don't have to take on a massive challenge right away. Instead, start with something that makes you slightly uncomfortable. It could be something as simple as trying a new hobby, learning a new skill, or speaking in front of a small group of people. The important thing is that it should be something that takes you out of your comfort zone but is still achievable. As you start to conquer these smaller challenges, you'll gain confidence and momentum to take on bigger ones. Remember, stepping out of your comfort zone is a process, and it takes time and practice. Don't expect to become a completely different person overnight. It's about making small, consistent steps towards growth and progress. Another important aspect of taking on new challenges is having the right mindset. You must believe in yourself and your abilities. As Henry Ford once said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So believe that you can overcome any challenge that comes your way, and you will. It's also essential to have a support system in place. Surround yourself with people who believe in you and encourage you to step out of your comfort zone. They'll be there to cheer you on, but also to pick you up when you stumble. And remember, it's okay to ask for help and support when you need it. Now, I want to address a common misconception about stepping out of your comfort zone. Many people believe that it means taking risks and being reckless. But that's not true. Stepping out of your comfort zone is not about being reckless. It's about being calculated and strategic. It's about taking calculated risks that have the potential to bring you closer to your goals and dreams. Lastly, I want to share with you the benefits of stepping out of your comfort zone. When we challenge ourselves and push ourselves out of our comfort zones, we not only grow and develop as individuals, but we also open ourselves up to new opportunities and experiences. 
we learn new skills, gain new perspectives, and become more resilient. And most importantly, we become the best versions of ourselves. So my friends, I challenge you to try new things. Make it a habit to do something new every day, no matter how small. It could be something as simple as taking a different route to work or trying a new type of coffee. And as you continue to try new things, you'll gradually break free from your comfort zone and experience a life of endless possibilities. In part two of this speech, we'll delve deeper into the topic of personal development and how trying new things is just the beginning of our journey towards growth and success. But for now, I want you to remember this. The only way to step out of your comfort zone is by trying new things. So go out there and embrace the unknown, because that's where true growth and success lie. Thank you. I'm excited to share with you today's message on how to achieve more with less effort. I know many of you may be feeling overwhelmed, exhausted, and frustrated with the constant demands of life. It seems like no matter how hard we work, there's always more to be done, and it can be exhausting. But here's the thing. You are not alone in this struggle. In fact, it's a common challenge that many of us face. However, the good news is there are ways to overcome this and turn things around. That's why I'm excited to share with you today five powerful ways to achieve more with less effort. These strategies have helped countless individuals, including myself, to increase productivity, reduce stress, and ultimately achieve more with less effort. So if you're ready to take control of your life and make the most out of your time and energy, then you're in the right place. By the end of this video, you will have a clear understanding of how to achieve more with less effort and start living a more fulfilled and successful life. So without further ado, let's dive into our five ways to achieve more with less effort, starting with the fifth way. Five, achieve more with less effort by taking breaks and recharge. Now I know what you're thinking. How can taking breaks help us achieve more? But trust me, my friends, it is a crucial step in our journey toward success. We live in a society that glorifies the hustle and grind culture. We are constantly bombarded with messages that tell us to work harder, longer, and without breaks. But the truth is, this mentality is not sustainable. We are not machines, we are human beings. And just like any machine, we need to rest and recharge in order to function at our best. Think about it. When was the last time you took a real break from work? And I don't mean scrolling through social media or binge-watching your favorite TV show. I mean a real break where you disconnect from work and allow your mind and body to rest. If you can't remember, then it's time to make a change. Taking breaks is not a sign of weakness. It is a sign of strength and self-awareness. It shows that you value your well-being and understand the importance of recharging your batteries. And let me tell you, my friends, when you take breaks and recharge, you will achieve more with less effort. But how exactly does this work? When we work for long periods without breaks, our productivity and focus start to decline. Our brains get tired, and we start making more mistakes. We become less efficient, and it takes us longer to complete tasks. And what do we do when we are not seeing results? We work even harder, thinking that it will make a difference. But the truth is, it only leads to burnout and exhaustion. On the other hand, when we take breaks, we give our brains a chance to rest and recharge. This allows us to come back to our work with a fresh perspective and renewed energy. We are able to think more clearly, make better decisions, and our productivity and creativity increase. And the best part? We don't feel drained and exhausted at the end of the day. But taking breaks is not just about resting our minds. It is also about taking care of our physical health. Sitting at a desk for hours on end can lead to a sedentary lifestyle, which can have negative effects on our health. Taking breaks allows us to get up, move our bodies, and get some much-needed exercise. This not only improves our physical health, but also increases our energy levels and improves our mood. Now I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I have so much work to do. I can't afford to take breaks. My friends, I understand that you may have a lot on your plate. But let me ask you this. What good is it to work non-stop if you are not producing quality work? Wouldn't it be better to take a break, recharge, and come back to your work with a clear mind and fresh perspective? Trust me, the quality of your work will improve, and you will achieve more in less time. But taking breaks is not just about resting and recharging, it is also about finding balance in our lives. We cannot be successful if we are constantly burning ourselves out. We need to find a balance between work and play, between hustle and rest. And taking breaks is a crucial step in achieving that balance. 
4. Achieve more with less effort by focusing on quality over quantity. Now this may seem counterintuitive at first. After all, isn't it logical that the more we do, the more we achieve? But I'm here to tell you that that is not always the case. Let me share with you a personal story. When I first started my journey toward success, I was eager and determined to do as much as I could. I believed that the more tasks I completed, the closer I would be to my goal. But as time went by, I realized that I was spreading myself too thin. I was doing a lot, but I wasn't doing anything exceptionally well. And that is when I understood the power of quality over quantity. You see, when we focus on quantity, we tend to overlook the importance of quality. We rush through tasks, cut corners, and compromise on the standards we set for ourselves. But when we shift our focus to quality, we take the time to do things right. We pay attention to the details, put in our best effort, and hold ourselves to a higher standard. Some of you may be thinking, but Jim, doesn't focusing on quality mean that we do less? And my answer to that is yes, it does. But let me ask you this. Would you rather do 10 things half-heartedly, or one thing with all your heart and soul? I believe the answer is clear. Focusing on quality over quantity also means that we prioritize and eliminate the unnecessary. We learn to say no to things that do not align with our goals and values. We focus on the tasks that truly matter and give them our undivided attention. This not only saves us time and energy, but also allows us to produce exceptional results. Another benefit of focusing on quality is that it sets us apart from the crowd. In a world where everyone is chasing after quantity, being someone who values quality stands out. It shows that we have a strong work ethic, attention to detail, and a desire for excellence. And these are qualities that are highly sought after in any field. Now I am not saying that quantity is not important, it certainly has its place. But when we make quality our priority, we can achieve more with less effort. We no longer have to spread ourselves too thin, and we can focus on the things that truly matter. So how can we incorporate this principle into our lives? The first step is to set high standards for ourselves. We must strive for excellence in everything we do, whether it is a small task or a big project. We must give it our best effort and aim for perfection. Secondly, we must learn to prioritize and eliminate the unnecessary. This means saying no to things that do not align with our goals and focusing on the tasks that will bring us closer to our dreams. And lastly, we must be patient and persistent. Achieving quality takes time and effort. It requires us to slow down and pay attention to the details, but the results are worth it. When we focus on quality, we not only achieve more but also find joy and fulfillment in our work. 3. Achieve more with less effort by using technology and tools. Now, some of you may be wondering, how can technology and tools help us achieve more with less effort? Well, let me tell you my friends, technology and tools are like a magic wand that can help us transform our lives and businesses. Firstly, let's talk about technology. It has made our lives so much easier and efficient. We no longer have to spend hours doing mundane tasks that can now be automated. Take, for example, the use of computers and the Internet. With just a few clicks, we can access a vast amount of information, connect with people from all over the world, and even run our businesses from the comfort of our own homes. But it's not just about the convenience and speed that technology offers. It's also about the opportunities it presents. With the rise of social media and e-commerce, we now have the ability to reach a global audience and market our products and services to a much larger customer base. This allows us to achieve more with less effort, as we no longer have to physically go out and market our businesses. We can do it all from our computers, or even our smartphones. Now, let's talk about tools. Tools are like the cherry on top of a cake. They are the extra boost that can take us from good to great. There are countless tools available to us today, from project management tools to marketing automation software. These tools not only save us time and effort, but also help us streamline our processes and make them more efficient. For example, if you're a business owner, you can use project management tools to keep track of your tasks and deadlines, collaborate with your team, and monitor your progress. This not only helps you achieve more with less effort, but also ensures that your projects are completed on time and to the best of your ability. Similarly, if you're a content creator, you can use tools like Canva or Adobe Creative Suite to create stunning visuals for your social media or website. These tools not only save you time and effort, 
but also help you create professional looking content that can attract more viewers and potential customers. But it's not just about business, my friends. Tools can also help us in our personal lives. For example, there are countless apps available that can help us track our fitness, manage our finances, and even improve our mental well-being. These tools can help us achieve our personal goals with less effort, as they provide us with the necessary guidance and support. Now I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, all this technology and tools sound great, but how do we know which ones to use? And that's a valid question. With so many options available, it can be overwhelming to choose the right ones. But my advice to you is to do your research, read reviews, and ask for recommendations from people you trust. And most importantly, don't be afraid to try new things. You never know which tool or technology might be the game changer for you. Achieve more with less effort by delegating tasks. Now I know some of you might be thinking, but Jim, isn't hard work the key to success? How can we achieve more by delegating tasks? And I understand your skepticism. But let me tell you, delegating tasks is not about avoiding hard work. It is about working smarter, not harder. You see, we all have limited time and energy. We cannot do everything ourselves. And even if we try, we will eventually burn out. But by delegating tasks, we can utilize our time and energy in the most efficient way possible. We can focus on the tasks that truly require our attention and leave the rest to others. This not only helps us achieve more in less time, but also allows us to maintain a better work-life balance. Now some of you might be thinking, but Jim, I don't have anyone to delegate tasks to. I am a one-person show. Well my friends, let me tell you, there is always a way. You can delegate tasks to your family members, friends, or even hire someone to help you. The key is to identify the tasks that can be delegated and find the right people to delegate them to. But before we dive into the how of delegating tasks, let's first understand why it is so important. You see, when we try to do everything ourselves, we limit our potential. We only have a certain set of skills and knowledge, and by delegating tasks, we can tap into the skills and knowledge of others. This not only helps us achieve more, but also brings new ideas and perspectives to the table. Moreover, delegating tasks also helps us build a team. We cannot achieve great success alone. We need a team of like-minded individuals who can support us and help us grow. By delegating tasks, we not only lighten our workload, but also give others the opportunity to learn and grow. And when we have a strong team, we can achieve much more with less effort. Now let's talk about how to delegate tasks effectively. First and foremost, you need to identify the tasks that can be delegated. These are the tasks that are not your core responsibilities and can be done by others. Once you have identified these tasks, you need to find the right people to delegate them to. Look for individuals who have the skills and knowledge to handle these tasks, and most importantly, trust them to do the job. Yes, trust is a crucial element when it comes to delegating tasks. You need to trust the people you delegate tasks to, and this trust comes from effective communication. Clearly communicate your expectations and provide all the necessary information and resources for the task. But at the same time, give them the freedom to work in their own way. This not only builds trust but also allows them to bring their unique skills and ideas to the table. Another important aspect of delegating tasks is to provide feedback. Don't just delegate a task and forget about it. Check in with the person, provide feedback, and offer support if needed. This not only helps the person improve, but also ensures that the task is completed to your satisfaction. And finally, don't be afraid to delegate important tasks. I know it can be scary to let go of tasks that are crucial for your success. But trust me, it is worth it. By delegating important tasks, you not only free up your time and energy, but also give others the opportunity to step up and grow. And when you have a team of individuals who can handle important tasks, you can achieve much more with less effort. Achieve more with less effort by prioritizing your tasks. Now you may be wondering, why is this the number one way? The answer is simple. Because prioritizing your tasks allows you to focus your time and energy on the most important things, which ultimately leads to greater productivity and success. Let me share with you a story from my own life. When I first started my career, I was a young, ambitious man with big dreams. I had a long list of things I wanted to achieve, and I was determined to do them all. I was constantly busy, running from one task to another, trying to get everything done. But at the end of the day, I felt exhausted, 
and I realized that I wasn't making much progress towards my goals. That's when I learned the power of prioritizing. I took a step back and looked at my to-do list. I realized that not all tasks were equal. Some were more important than others, and some were just time wasters. So I made a list of my top priorities and focused all my energy on them. And you know what? I started seeing results. I was achieving more with less effort because I was focusing on the tasks that truly mattered. This is the key to success. Knowing what tasks deserve your time and energy. We all have 24 hours in a day, and how we use those hours determines our success. We cannot control time, but we can control how we use it. And that's where prioritizing comes in. Now let me share with you three simple steps to help you prioritize your tasks and achieve more with less effort. Step 1. Identify your goals. The first step is to identify your goals. What do you want to achieve? What are your long-term and short-term goals? Once you have a clear understanding of your goals, you can then break them down into smaller, actionable tasks. For example, if your goal is to start a successful business, your tasks may include market research, creating a business plan, and networking. By identifying your goals, you can then prioritize these tasks based on their importance and urgency. Step 2. Determine the importance and urgency of your tasks. The second step is to determine the importance and urgency of your tasks. This is where the famous Eisenhower matrix comes into play. This matrix categorizes tasks into four quadrants. Important and urgent, important but not urgent, urgent but not important, and neither important nor urgent. The key here is to focus on the important tasks, whether they are urgent or not. These are the tasks that will bring you closer to your goals and have a long-term impact on your success. The urgent but not important tasks can be delegated or eliminated, while the neither important nor urgent tasks can be put on hold or eliminated altogether. Step 3. Take action. The final step is to take action. Prioritizing your tasks is only effective if you actually take action on them. So make a plan and stick to it. Focus on your top priorities and allocate your time and energy accordingly. And remember, it's okay to say no to tasks that don't align with your goals or don't add value to your life. By following these three simple steps, you will be able to prioritize your tasks and achieve more with less effort. You will have a clear direction and your time and energy will be focused on the things that truly matter. I want to leave you with this quote by Stephen Covey. The key is not to prioritize what's on your schedule, but to schedule your priorities. So my challenge to you is to start prioritizing your tasks today and see the difference it makes in your life. Remember, success is not about doing more, it's about doing the right things. Thank you. I'm thrilled to share with you some powerful insights on achieving realistic goals. Are you someone who struggles with setting goals and actually achieving them? Do you find yourself constantly setting high expectations for yourself, only to end up feeling disappointed and defeated? Well, you are certainly not alone. In today's fast-paced world, it can be challenging to stay focused and motivated towards our goals. But fear not, because in today's message, I am going to share with you five powerful ways to achieve realistic goals and turn your dreams into reality. You see, I have spent decades studying and teaching the principles of success and personal development, and one of the key factors that I have found to be crucial in achieving success is setting realistic goals. It's not about setting impossible goals that leave us feeling overwhelmed and discouraged. It's about setting goals that are challenging yet attainable, and then taking consistent action towards them. So, if you are ready to turn things around and finally achieve the success you desire, then I urge you to keep reading this message. By the end of it, you will have a clear understanding of how to set realistic goals and the steps you need to take to make them a reality. So let's get started. Starting with the number 5 way to achieve realistic goals. By celebrating your successes. You see we live in a society that is constantly pushing us to strive for more, to never settle, to always be on the go. And while ambition and drive are important, we often forget to take a step back and recognize how far we have come. We are so focused on the end goal that we forget to appreciate the journey and celebrate our achievements along the way. So, what do I mean by celebration? It can be as simple as acknowledging your progress, giving yourself a pat on the back, or treating yourself to something special. It's about taking a moment to reflect on your accomplishments and feeling proud of yourself. Now, some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I haven't achieved my ultimate goal yet. How can I celebrate? And to that, I say, Celebrate the small wins. Every step towards your goal is a victory, 
and it is important to acknowledge and celebrate them. It will give you the motivation and drive to keep going. Let me share a personal story with you. When I first started my journey toward success, I had a big dream, but I didn't know how to get there. I set small goals for myself, and with each one I achieved, I celebrated. It could be something as simple as finishing a book, or making a new connection in my field. And you know what? Those celebrations kept me going. They reminded me that I was making progress, and that my dream was within reach. Now I want you to imagine this. You are on a long road trip, and your destination is a beautiful beach. Along the way, you pass by breathtaking landscapes, charming towns, and interesting landmarks. Do you just focus on reaching the beach, or do you take a moment to appreciate and enjoy these little moments? I hope you said the latter, because life is not just about the destination, it is about the journey and the experiences we have along the way. The same goes for our goals. It is not just about reaching the end goal, it is about the process and the growth we experience. And celebrating our successes is a way to acknowledge and appreciate that growth. Now, I want to address something that holds many of us back from celebrating our successes, fear of complacency. We are afraid that if we celebrate, we will become content and lose our drive to keep going. But let me tell you, celebration does not equal complacency. In fact, it is quite the opposite. Celebrating our successes gives us the motivation and confidence to keep pushing towards our goals. It is like fuel for our journey. So, how can we incorporate celebration into our goal-setting process? First and foremost, set realistic goals. This is crucial because when we set unrealistic goals, we set ourselves up for failure, and failure is not something to celebrate. But when we set realistic goals, we can celebrate our progress and achievements along the way. Secondly, keep track of your progress. This can be in the form of a journal, a vision board, or any other method that works for you. When you have a visual representation of your progress, it becomes easier to see how far you have come and celebrate your successes. Lastly, don't be afraid to share your successes with others. Celebrating with friends and loved ones not only makes the experience more enjoyable, but also holds you accountable and keeps you motivated. Which leads us to number four. Achieve realistic goals by staying accountable. Accountability is the glue that holds all the other ingredients together. It is the key to unlocking your full potential and achieving your goals. Without accountability, your goals are just mere wishes and dreams. They will remain out of reach, and you will continue to struggle and feel unfulfilled. So, what exactly is accountability? Simply put, it is taking responsibility for your actions and their outcomes. It is being answerable to yourself and others for the results you produce. It is about owning your mistakes and learning from them. It is about being consistent and persistent in your efforts, even when things get tough. Accountability is not about blaming others or making excuses. It is about taking control of your life and making things happen. It is about being proactive instead of reactive. It is about being the driver of your own destiny rather than a passenger. Now, let me ask you. How many of you have set goals for yourself in the past and failed to achieve them? I'm sure many of you have. And if I were to ask you the reason for your failure, what would you say? Lack of time? Lack of resources? Lack of support? While these may seem like valid reasons, the real reason behind your failure is lack of accountability. You see, when you are not accountable, you tend to make excuses and blame external factors for your lack of progress. You give yourself a way out by saying, I couldn't achieve my goal because I didn't have enough time, or, I didn't have the right resources. But the truth is, these are just excuses that you use to justify your lack of commitment and effort. On the other hand, when you are accountable, you take ownership of your actions and their outcomes. You don't make excuses, instead, you find solutions. You don't waste time complaining, instead, you take action. You don't wait for the perfect conditions, instead, you make the best of what you have. Accountability is not just about achieving your goals, it is also about personal growth and development. When you hold yourself accountable, you become more self-aware. You recognize your strengths and weaknesses and work on improving them. You become more disciplined and focused. You become more resilient and adaptable. You become a better version of yourself. Now let me share with you three ways to stay accountable and achieve your goals. First and foremost, set clear and measurable goals. As I mentioned earlier, this is the first step towards achieving any goal. 
When your goals are specific and measurable, it becomes easier to hold yourself accountable. You know exactly what you are working towards, and you can track your progress. It also helps you to break down your goals into smaller manageable tasks, which makes it easier to stay on track. Secondly, find an accountability partner or join a mastermind group. Having someone to hold you accountable can be a game changer. It could be a friend, family member, or a coach. Choose someone who will be honest with you and push you to do your best. Joining a mastermind group is also a great way to stay accountable. You can share your goals with like-minded individuals and receive support and feedback. It also creates a sense of healthy competition, which can motivate you to stay on track. Lastly, track your progress and celebrate your wins. It is crucial to track your progress regularly. This will help you to identify any areas where you may be falling behind and make necessary adjustments. It will also give you a sense of accomplishment when you see how far you have come. And don't forget to celebrate your wins, no matter how small they may seem. This will keep you motivated and energized to keep going. Which leads us to number three. Achieve realistic goals by creating a plan and sticking to it. Now let me tell you, creating a plan is not just about writing down your goals on a piece of paper. It's about creating a roadmap that will guide you towards your destination. It's about breaking down your big audacious goals into smaller actionable steps that you can take every day. It's about having a clear vision of where you want to go and how you're going to get there. But creating a plan is just the first step. The real challenge lies in sticking to it. You see, it's easy to get caught up in the busyness of life and lose track of our goals. It's easy to get distracted by shiny objects and lose sight of our priorities. But if we want to achieve our goals, we must have the discipline and the commitment to stick to our plan, no matter what. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. But Jim, creating a plan and sticking to it sounds so boring and restrictive. I want to live my life freely, without any rules or restrictions. Well my friends, let me tell you this. Having a plan and sticking to it is not about restricting yourself. It's about giving yourself the freedom to live the life you truly desire. Think about it. When you have a plan, you know exactly what you need to do and when you need to do it. You have a sense of direction and purpose. You don't waste your time and energy on things that don't align with your goals. And most importantly, you have a sense of control over your life. You are not at the mercy of circumstances. Rather, you are the one who is in charge. But let me be clear. Creating a plan and sticking to it does not guarantee success. It's not a magic formula that will automatically make all your dreams come true. It's just a tool, a powerful tool that will help you turn your dreams into a reality. It's up to you to put in the hard work and dedication to make it happen. And I know it's not easy. It takes a lot of discipline and determination to stick to a plan, especially when things get tough. But that's where the power of commitment comes in. You see, when you make a commitment to yourself, you are making a promise to yourself that you will do whatever it takes to achieve your goals. And when you have that kind of commitment, nothing can stop you. Now I want to share with you a simple yet powerful technique that will help you stick to your plan. It's called the 5 minute rule. Whenever you feel like giving up or getting distracted, just tell yourself that you will work on your goal for just 5 minutes. And I can guarantee you, once you get started, you will find the motivation and momentum to keep going. But let me warn you. There will be days when you will feel like giving up. There will be days when you will doubt yourself and your abilities. But that's when you need to remind yourself of your why. Why did you set this goal in the first place? What is it that you truly want? And most importantly, who do you want to become in the process? Remember, the journey towards achieving your goals is not just about the destination. It's about the person you become along the way. It's about the lessons you learn, the challenges you overcome, and the growth you experience. So don't give up, don't lose sight of your goals. And most importantly, don't lose sight of who you want to become. Which leads us to number two. Achieve realistic goals by breaking down big goals into smaller achievable tasks. This may seem like a simple concept, but it is one of the most powerful tools for achieving success. Many of us have big dreams and goals, but we often get overwhelmed and discouraged when we think about the amount of work and time it will take to achieve them. But I am here to tell you that by breaking down those big goals into smaller achievable tasks, you can make your dreams a reality. Let me share with you a personal story. When I first started my career, I had a big goal of becoming a millionaire. It seemed like an impossible task, but I knew that I had to break it down into smaller achievable tasks. 
So I set a goal to save $100 every month. It may not seem like much, but it was a realistic and achievable task for me at that time. And as I continued to save and invest that money, I saw my goal getting closer and closer. And eventually, after years of hard work and dedication, I achieved my goal of becoming a millionaire. This is just one example of how breaking down big goals into smaller tasks can lead to success. So, how can you apply this principle to your own life? The first step is to clearly define your big goal. What is it that you want to achieve? Is it starting your own business, buying a house, or getting in shape? Whatever it may be, write it down and make it specific. Once you have your big goal in mind, it's time to break it down into smaller achievable tasks. This requires careful planning and organization. Sit down and think about all the steps that are necessary to achieve your goal. Then break those steps down into smaller tasks that you can work on each day. This will not only make your goals seem more manageable, but will also give you a sense of progress and accomplishment as you check off each task. Another important aspect of breaking down big goals is to set realistic timelines. Don't try to rush through the process and achieve your goal in a short amount of time. This will only lead to burnout and disappointment. Instead, give yourself enough time to complete each task and make sure it aligns with your overall timeline for achieving your big goal. Now, I want to address a common misconception about breaking down big goals. Some people may think that by breaking down their goals into smaller tasks, they are somehow lowering their expectations or settling for less. But let me tell you, that is not the case. In fact, breaking down your goals can help you achieve even bigger and more ambitious goals in the long run. Think of it this way. If you set a big goal without breaking it down, you may get overwhelmed and give up before you even start. But by breaking it down into smaller tasks, you are creating a roadmap for success. And as you achieve each task, you gain confidence and momentum, which can propel you towards even bigger goals. I also want to mention the importance of accountability when it comes to breaking down big goals. It's easy to get off track and lose focus when we are working towards a big goal. But by having someone hold us accountable, whether it's a friend, mentor, or coach, we are more likely to stay on track and achieve our goals. In addition to accountability, it's also important to celebrate your successes along the way. Don't wait until you achieve your big goal to celebrate. Take the time to acknowledge and celebrate each task you complete. This will not only keep you motivated, but will also help you appreciate the journey towards your big goal. Which leads us to number one. Achieve realistic goals by setting specific and measurable goals. You see, the problem with most people is that they have vague and general goals. They say things like, I want to be successful, or I want to be rich. But what does success or being rich mean to them? Without a clear definition and a specific plan, these goals remain nothing but distant dreams. As the saying goes, a goal without a plan is just a wish. So, the first step towards achieving any goal is to make it specific. This means defining exactly what you want to achieve. For example, instead of saying, I want to be successful, specify what success means to you. Is it financial stability, a fulfilling career, or a happy family life? The more specific you are, the clearer your path towards that goal will be. The second step is to make your goals measurable. This means setting a quantifiable target that you can track and measure your progress against. For instance, instead of saying, I want to be rich, set a specific amount of money that you want to earn in a certain period of time. This will help you stay motivated and focused on your goal. Now some of you may be wondering, why is it so important to set specific and measurable goals? Well, let me tell you from my own experience. I used to have vague goals just like most people, but it wasn't until I started setting specific and measurable goals that I saw a significant change in my life. You see, when you have a specific and measurable goal, you have a clear target to aim for. It's like having a destination on a map. You know exactly where you want to go, and you can plan your journey accordingly. This clarity and focus are what drive you towards your goal. Moreover, setting specific and measurable goals helps you break down your big, long-term goals into smaller, achievable ones. This makes the process less overwhelming and more manageable. It also allows you to track your progress and make any necessary adjustments along the way. Now some of you may still be skeptical and think, but what if I don't achieve my goal? My answer to that is, it's better to aim for the moon and land among the stars than to aim for nothing and end up with nothing. Even if you don't achieve your goal, you would have made progress towards it, and that is something to be proud of. Plus, 
you can always reevaluate and set new specific and measurable goals. One important thing to keep in mind while setting goals is to make them realistic. Yes, we all have big dreams, and that's great. But setting unrealistic goals will only lead to disappointment and frustration. It's essential to be honest with yourself, and set goals that are achievable within a certain period of time. Another crucial aspect of setting specific and measurable goals is to write them down. Writing down your goals makes them more tangible, and gives them a sense of importance. It also serves as a constant reminder of what you're working towards. So get a pen and paper or use a goal-setting app and write down your goals. Now, setting specific and measurable goals is only the first step towards achieving them. The next step is to take action. You can have the most well-defined goals, but if you don't take action, they will remain just that. Goals. So break down your goals into smaller, actionable steps and start working towards them. Remember, success is not a destination, it's a journey. And setting specific and measurable goals is the roadmap to that journey. It's what keeps you focused, motivated, and on track. So don't be afraid to dream big, but make sure to set specific and measurable goals to turn those dreams into reality. I want to leave you with this quote by Tony Robbins. Setting goals is the first step in turning the invisible into the visible. So let's make our goals visible by setting them specific and measurable. And I have no doubt that with determination, hard work, and a clear plan, you will achieve all your realistic goals and live a fulfilling and successful life. Thank you. In today's message, we're going to discuss the power of setting and achieving goals. I know many of you may be feeling frustrated or stuck in your current situation, but I want you to know that you are not alone. We all face challenges and obstacles in our lives, but the key is to not let them hold us back. By listening to this message, you will learn practical and proven strategies that will help you turn things around and start achieving your goals. So, get ready to take notes, and let's dive into the five ways to achieve your goals. Starting with number five, I want to talk to you about the fifth way to achieve your goals, which is continuously learning and improving. You see, success is not a one-time event. It is a continuous journey of growth and improvement. And in order to reach our full potential and achieve our goals, we must commit ourselves to a lifetime of learning and self-improvement. The world we live in is constantly evolving, and if we do not adapt and grow along with it, we will be left behind. We must be willing to step out of our comfort zones and embrace new challenges. As the saying goes, if you're not growing, you're dying. So, how do we continuously learn and improve? It starts with having a growth mindset. This means believing that our abilities and intelligence can be developed through hard work and dedication. It means seeing failures and setbacks as opportunities for growth rather than obstacles. We must also be open to new ideas and perspectives. Often we get stuck in our own ways of thinking and shut ourselves off from new information. But in order to learn and improve, we must be willing to listen and consider different points of view. Another important aspect of continuous learning is seeking out new knowledge and skills. This can be through formal education, such as taking courses or getting a degree, or through self-education, such as reading books and attending seminars. The key is to never stop learning and expanding our knowledge base. But it's not just about acquiring new knowledge. It's also about applying it. We must take action and put what we learn into practice. As the great philosopher Aristotle once said, for the things we have to learn before we can do them, we learn by doing them. And this brings me to the concept of continuous improvement. Learning is not just about acquiring knowledge. It's about using that knowledge to become better versions of ourselves. We must constantly evaluate our actions and behaviors and look for ways to improve them. This can be done through setting goals and working towards them. By setting specific, measurable, and achievable goals, we give ourselves a target to strive for. And as we work towards these goals, we learn and grow along the way. But it's important to remember that learning and improvement is not a linear process. There will be ups and downs, successes and failures, and that's okay. We must embrace the journey and be patient with ourselves. As long as we are continuously learning and improving, we are on the right track. Now some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't have the time or resources to continuously learn and improve. And to that, I say, make the time. We all have 24 hours in a day. It's how we choose to use them that makes the difference. Instead of mindlessly scrolling through social media or binge-watching TV shows, use that time to read a book or take an online course. And as for resources, there are plenty of free or low-cost options available. The internet has made information more accessible than ever before. 
take advantage of it. And if there's something you really want to learn or improve on, invest in yourself. The return on investment will be worth it. Now I want to address the fear of failure. Many of us hesitate to try new things or take risks because we are afraid of failing. But I want to remind you that failure is not the opposite of success, it is a part of success. Every successful person has experienced failure at some point in their journey. It's what we do with those failures that determines our success. So, don't be afraid to try new things and make mistakes. Embrace them as learning opportunities and use them to continuously improve. Now to number four, which is staying accountable. As we all know, setting goals is easy. We can all come up with a list of things we want to achieve or improve in our lives. But the real challenge lies in actually achieving those goals. And that is where accountability comes in. Accountability is the glue that holds commitment to your goals. It is the driving force that keeps you on track and helps you overcome the obstacles that come your way. Without accountability, our goals are just mere wishes that are easily forgotten or abandoned. So, how do we stay accountable? The first step is to make a commitment to yourself. You have to be fully committed to your goals, and that means taking responsibility for your actions and decisions. You cannot rely on others to hold you accountable, it has to come from within. Next, you need to have a clear plan in place. You cannot stay accountable if you don't know what you are working towards. Your goals should be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. This will give you a clear roadmap to follow and make it easier to track your progress. Now let's talk about the importance of having an accountability partner. This could be a friend, family member, or a mentor. Someone who will hold you accountable and keep you on track. It's important to choose someone who is supportive, but also not afraid to give you a push when you need it. This person will provide you with the necessary motivation and encouragement to keep going when things get tough. But remember, ultimately, you are accountable to yourself. Your accountability partner is there to support you, but the responsibility lies with you. You have to be honest with yourself about your progress. If you fall off track, it's important to take ownership of your mistakes and make the necessary adjustments to get back on track. Another important aspect of accountability is tracking your progress. This not only helps you stay on track but also gives you a sense of accomplishment as you see yourself getting closer to your goals. You can track your progress in various ways, such as keeping a journal, using a habit tracker, or setting mini goals along the way. Now let's address the elephant in the room. What happens when we face setbacks or failures? It's important to understand that setbacks and failures are a part of the journey towards success. They are not a sign of weakness or defeat, but rather an opportunity to learn and grow. When faced with a setback, it's important to not beat yourself up. Instead, take a step back, reassess the situation, and come up with a plan to move forward. And remember, it's okay to ask for help. Your accountability partner can be a great source of support during these times. Lastly, I want to stress the importance of celebrating your successes. Often we get so caught up in chasing our goals that we forget to acknowledge our achievements along the way. Celebrating your successes, no matter how small, will give you the motivation and confidence to keep going. And now, I'm excited to share with you the third way to achieve your goals. We all have dreams and aspirations, big or small. We set goals and make plans, but often we find ourselves stuck, unable to move forward. We may have the desire and the vision, but without action, our dreams will remain just that. Dreams. That is why the third way to achieve your goals is to take action. You see, the first step to achieving anything is to have a dream, a goal, a vision. This is what ignites the fire within us, the passion that drives us forward. But a dream without action is merely a wish. It is the action that turns our dreams into reality. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. But Jim, taking action is easier said than done. And you are right. Taking action requires effort, dedication, and sometimes even sacrifice. But let me tell you, my friends the rewards are worth it. Let me share with you a story about a young man named John. John had a dream of becoming a successful businessman, but he came from a poor family and had no connections or resources. Despite the odds stacked against him, John was determined to make his dream a reality. He took action by starting his own business, working long hours, and making sacrifices along the way. And eventually, his hard work paid off. John is a successful entrepreneur with a thriving business. In today's message, we're going to discuss the power of setting and achieving goals. 
I know many of you may be feeling frustrated or stuck in your current situation, but I want you to know that you are not alone. We all face challenges and obstacles in our lives, but the key is to not let them hold us back. By listening to this message, you will learn practical and proven strategies that will help you turn things around and start achieving your goals. So, get ready to take notes, and let's dive into the five ways to achieve your goals. Starting with number five, I want to talk to you about the fifth way to achieve your goals, which is continuously learning and improving. You see, success is not a one-time event. It is a continuous journey of growth and improvement. And in order to reach our full potential and achieve our goals, we must commit ourselves to a lifetime of learning and self-improvement. The world we live in is constantly evolving, and if we do not adapt and grow along with it, we will be left behind. We must be willing to step out of our comfort zones and embrace new challenges. As the saying goes, if you're not growing, you're dying. So, how do we continuously learn and improve? It starts with having a growth mindset. This means believing that our abilities and intelligence can be developed through hard work and dedication. It means seeing failures and setbacks as opportunities for growth rather than obstacles. We must also be open to new ideas and perspectives. Often we get stuck in our own ways of thinking and shut ourselves off from new information. But in order to learn and improve, we must be willing to listen and consider different points of view. Another important aspect of continuous learning is seeking out new knowledge and skills. This can be through formal education, such as taking courses or getting a degree, or through self-education, such as reading books and attending seminars. The key is to never stop learning and expanding our knowledge base. But it's not just about acquiring new knowledge. It's also about applying it. We must take action and put what we learn into practice. As the great philosopher Aristotle once said, for the things we have to learn before we can do them, we learn by doing them. And this brings me to the concept of continuous improvement. Learning is not just about acquiring knowledge. It's about using that knowledge to become better versions of ourselves. We must constantly evaluate our actions and behaviors and look for ways to improve them. This can be done through setting goals and working towards them. By setting specific, measurable, and achievable goals, we give ourselves a target to strive for. And as we work towards these goals, we learn and grow along the way. But it's important to remember that learning and improvement is not a linear process. There will be ups and downs, successes and failures, and that's okay. We must embrace the journey and be patient with ourselves. As long as we are continuously learning and improving, we are on the right track. Now some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't have the time or resources to continuously learn and improve. And to that, I say, make the time. We all have 24 hours in a day. It's how we choose to use them that makes the difference. Instead of mindlessly scrolling through social media or binge-watching TV shows, use that time to read a book or take an online course. And as for resources, there are plenty of free or low-cost options available. The Internet has made information more accessible than ever before. Take advantage of it. And if there's something you really want to learn or improve on, invest in yourself. The return on investment will be worth it. Now I want to address the fear of failure. Many of us hesitate to try new things or take risks because we are afraid of failing. But I want to remind you that failure is not the opposite of success, it is a part of success. Every successful person has experienced failure at some point in their journey. It's what we do with those failures that determines our success. So, don't be afraid to try new things and make mistakes. Embrace them as learning opportunities and use them to continuously improve. Now to number four, which is staying accountable. As we all know, setting goals is easy. We can all come up with a list of things we want to achieve or improve in our lives. But the real challenge lies in actually achieving those goals. And that is where accountability comes in. Accountability is the glue that holds commitment to your goals. It is the driving force that keeps you on track and helps you overcome the obstacles that come your way. Without accountability, our goals are just mere wishes that are easily forgotten or abandoned. So, how do we stay accountable? The first step is to make a commitment to yourself. You have to be fully committed to your goals, and that means taking responsibility for your actions and decisions. You cannot rely on others to hold you accountable, it has to come from within. Next, you need to have a clear plan in place. You cannot stay accountable if you don't know what you are working towards. Your goals should be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. This will give you a clear roadmap to follow and make it easier to track your progress. 
Now let's talk about the importance of having an accountability partner. This could be a friend, family member, or a mentor. Someone who will hold you accountable and keep you on track. It's important to choose someone who is supportive, but also not afraid to give you a push when you need it. This person will provide you with the necessary motivation and encouragement to keep going when things get tough. But remember, ultimately, you are accountable to yourself. Your accountability partner is there to support you, but the responsibility lies with you. You have to be honest with yourself about your progress. If you fall off track, it's important to take ownership of your mistakes and make the necessary adjustments to get back on track. Another important aspect of accountability is tracking your progress. This not only helps you stay on track but also gives you a sense of accomplishment as you see yourself getting closer to your goals. You can track your progress in various ways, such as keeping a journal, using a habit tracker, or setting mini goals along the way. Now let's address the elephant in the room. What happens when we face setbacks or failures? It's important to understand that setbacks and failures are a part of the journey towards success. They are not a sign of weakness or defeat, but rather an opportunity to learn and grow. When faced with a setback, it's important to not beat yourself up. Instead, take a step back, reassess the situation, and come up with a plan to move forward. And remember, it's okay to ask for help. Your accountability partner can be a great source of support during these times. Lastly, I want to stress the importance of celebrating your successes. Often we get so caught up in chasing our goals that we forget to acknowledge our achievements along the way. Celebrating your successes, no matter how small, will give you the motivation and confidence to keep going. And now, I'm excited to share with you the third way to achieve your goals. We all have dreams and aspirations, big or small. We set goals and make plans, but often we find ourselves stuck, unable to move forward. We may have the desire and the vision, but without action, our dreams will remain just that. Dreams. That is why the third way to achieve your goals is to take action. You see, the first step to achieving anything is to have a dream, a goal, a vision. This is what ignites the fire within us, the passion that drives us forward. But a dream without action is merely a wish. It is the action that turns our dreams into reality. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. But Jim, taking action is easier said than done. And you are right. Taking action requires effort, dedication, and sometimes even sacrifice. But let me tell you, my friends, the rewards are worth it. Let me share with you a story about a young man named John. John had a dream of becoming a successful businessman, but he came from a poor family and had no connections or resources. Despite the odds stacked against him, John was determined to make his dream a reality. He took action by starting his own business, working long hours, and making sacrifices along the way. And eventually, his hard work paid off. Today, John is a successful entrepreneur with a thriving business. He could have easily given up on his dream, but instead, he took action. He worked tirelessly, taking on odd jobs to fund his education and attending networking events to meet people in the business world. He faced rejection and setbacks, but he never gave up. Today, John is the CEO of a successful company, living his dream and inspiring others to do the same. You see, taking action is not just about physically doing something. It is also about having the right mindset. It is about being proactive and taking responsibility for our lives. It is about understanding that we are in control of our own destiny and that every action we take or don't take has an impact on our future. So, how can we take action towards our goals? The first step is to have a clear and specific goal. As the saying goes, if you don't know where you are going, any road will take you there. Be specific about what you want to achieve and write it down. This will give you a roadmap to follow and keep you focused on your destination. The next step is to break down your goal into smaller manageable tasks. This will make it less overwhelming and more achievable. Remember, Rome wasn't built in a day, and neither will your goals be accomplished overnight. But by taking consistent action towards your goal, you will eventually get there. Now I want to address a common misconception about taking action. Many people believe that action means constantly being busy and working non-stop. But that is not the case. Taking action also means being strategic and using your time effectively. It means prioritizing your tasks and focusing on the ones that will bring you closer to your goal. Another crucial aspect of taking action is to have a positive attitude. We all face challenges and obstacles on our journey towards our goals. 
but it is our attitude towards these challenges that will determine our success. Instead of seeing them as roadblocks, see them as opportunities to learn and grow. As the saying goes, when life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Taking action also means being persistent. It is easy to get discouraged when things don't go as planned. But remember, success is not a straight path. It is filled with ups and downs, and it is those who persist through the tough times that ultimately achieve their goals. Lastly, I want to remind you that taking action also means taking care of yourself. It is essential to have a healthy mind and body to have the energy and motivation to pursue your goals. Make time for self-care, exercise, and rest. These are not distractions, they are essential for your overall well-being. Next is number two, which is creating a plan. We all have dreams and aspirations, but without a plan, they will remain just that. Dreams. A plan is like a roadmap that helps us navigate our way towards our goals. It gives us direction, focus, and a sense of purpose. As the saying goes, a goal without a plan is just a wish. So, how do we create a plan that will lead us to success? The first step is to have a clear and specific goal. This means knowing exactly what you want to achieve and setting a deadline for it. Without a clear goal, your plan will lack direction and may lead you astray. Once you have a goal in mind, the next step is to break it down into smaller, actionable steps. This will make your goal more manageable and less overwhelming. For example, if your goal is to start your own business, your smaller steps could be researching the market, creating a business plan, and networking with potential clients or investors. Now let me share with you a crucial aspect of creating a plan. Writing it down. This may seem like a simple task, but it is one of the most powerful tools for achieving your goals. Writing down your plan makes it tangible and gives you a sense of accountability. It also serves as a constant reminder of what you need to do to achieve your goal. But creating a plan is not just about writing down your goals and steps. It also involves setting priorities and making sacrifices. We all have 24 hours in a day, and how we use that time will determine our success. To achieve our goals, we must prioritize our tasks and eliminate distractions. This may mean sacrificing some leisure time or giving up certain habits that do not align with our goals. Remember, success requires sacrifice. Another essential aspect of creating a plan is to have a positive mindset. No matter how well-crafted your plan may be, it will not guarantee success if you do not have a positive attitude. You must believe in yourself and your abilities. As Henry Ford once said, Whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. So believe that you can achieve your goals. And your plan will become a reality. Now let me share with you a powerful tool that will help you stay on track with your plan. Accountability. Find someone who can hold you accountable for your actions and progress. This can be a friend, a family member, or a mentor. Share your plan with them and ask them to check in with you regularly. This will not only keep you accountable, but also provide you with support and motivation when you need it. However, creating a plan does not mean that you will not face obstacles or setbacks. In fact, they are inevitable on the road to success. But what sets successful people apart is their ability to adapt and adjust their plans when faced with challenges. Remember, a plan is not set in stone, and you must be willing to make changes when necessary. As the saying goes, if the plan doesn't work, change the plan, but never the goal. Lastly, I want to emphasize the importance of taking action. A plan is useless if you do not take action. You can have the most well-crafted plan, but if you do not put it into action, it will not lead you to success. So do not wait for the perfect time or for everything to fall into place. Take action now and make progress towards your goals every day. And now, to number one. I have spent my entire life studying success and personal development, and I can confidently say that I have found the key to unlocking your full potential and achieving your dreams. So without further ado, let's dive into the power of setting clear and specific goals. Goals are the fuel that propels us forward in life. They give us direction, motivation, and a sense of purpose. Without goals, we are like a ship without a rudder, aimlessly drifting in the sea of life. But not just any goals will do. It is essential to set clear and specific goals if we want to see real progress and success. Why is it so crucial to have clear and specific goals? Well, for starters, they give us a sense of direction. When we have a clear destination in mind, it becomes easier to map out a plan and take action towards it. 
It's like having a GPS for our lives. We know where we want to go, and we can plan the best route to get there. Furthermore, clear and specific goals allow us to measure our progress. When we have a specific outcome in mind, we can track our progress and make adjustments as needed. It's like having a scoreboard in a game. We can see how we are doing and make changes to improve our performance. Lastly, I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't want to limit myself by setting specific goals. What if I want to change my mind or try something else? And to that, I say, it's okay to change your goals as you grow and evolve, but it's essential to have a clear and specific goal in mind at any given time. It's like building a house. You may change the design or the color scheme along the way, but you need a blueprint to guide you in the construction process. So how do we set clear and specific goals? First and foremost, we must have a clear vision of what we want to achieve. What is your ultimate goal? What do you want to accomplish in your life? Once you have a clear vision, break it down into smaller specific goals. This will make it more manageable and less overwhelming. Next, write down your goals. Studies have shown that people who write down their goals are more likely to achieve them. It's like making a contract with yourself. Make them smart, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. This acronym is a powerful tool for setting clear and specific goals. Lastly, review your goals regularly. Goals are not set in stone. As we grow and evolve, our goals may change, and that's okay. It's essential to review our goals periodically and make adjustments as needed. This will ensure that our goals are still aligned with our desires and dreams. So I challenge you today to set clear and specific goals for yourself. Write them down, make them smart, and review them regularly. I promise you, with this powerful tool, you will be on your way to achieving your dreams and living a fulfilling life. Thank you.